Kristen Atchison here, and we are going to talk about um, how to describe either main effects or interactions in a factorial design. So remember, factorial design is any experiment that has more than one independent variable. And when we do that, we're going to have a main effect of each independent variable, as well as interactions between those. So we've already talked about how to identify whether there's a main effect and interaction. We're going to talk about how to describe those in words um, for a properly APA formatted findings. Okay, so as a reminder, what factorial designs can do, they can show interactions. And remember these interactions, as your book talks about, is a difference in the differences, okay? So remember we looked on the marginal means and we said, okay, well there's this difference between this main effect and there's this difference between this main effect. And then we looked inside the matrices and we said, okay, well, is there something different going on inside here than is being described by the marginal means. And so again, that's where that difference in the differences where that idea comes from. An interaction is again the effect of one independent variable that depends on the other independent variable. There's always going to be this kind of caveat statement in an interaction because it's not just one independent variable acting alone. That's the main effect. It's not the other independent variable acting alone. That's the main effect of the other independent variable. An interaction are when those two independent variables are interacting with each other. So one level of the independent variable depends on the other independent variable. So we'll say the difference depends on, or is the difference is especially for. Um, we'll talk about like it's this way for one level, however, it's this way for another level, but it's this way for another level. Some sort of caveat statement to say there's a difference in the differences. This is what's going on for level one, but something completely different is happening for level two. And we've got to show those differences. We don't live in a main effect world, and that's why factorial designs are really, really helpful. We don't live in a world where just one variable is causing change. These things interact with each other. These things are complex, and complex designs like factorial designs allow us to look at that. So first, let's talk about describing a main effect. Your book gives you a template. Um, so there is a main effect for blank, such that blank is higher than blank. Okay, so we'll walk through this. So here um, we have um, vocabulary training versus no training, um, and then verbal math score, verbal scores versus math scores, okay? Um, and so what we'll do is let's say, well, okay, was there a difference between verbal test, verbal math, verbal scores, and math scores? Um, here we look at the marginal means and we have verbal at three and a half and we have math at three. Again, we're going to say that any non-zero difference is um, going, we're going to describe that, okay? When we get to is that different enough, that's the statistics part. We're going to just start with any non-zero difference um, is we're going to describe that, okay? So we have a non-zero difference. It's a half a point. Um, so we would say that there's a main effect for the kind of test such that verbal scores are higher than math scores, okay? Um, we'll do the same thing for vocabulary training versus no training. Um, so there's a difference there. We have four versus two and a half, right? So vocabulary training people scored higher when they had the vocabulary training than when they didn't. So there's a main effect for the type of training such that vocabulary training groups scored higher than the no training group. Notice what we've done here, okay? In both situations, we're only describing the main effect for one of the independent variables at a time. So we'll say, okay, there's a main effect for training and we have no mention of math versus verbal because we're not interested in math versus verbal here. We're only interested in the independent variable vocabulary training versus no training. So there was no effect for type of training um, such that, uh, or there was an effect, I'm sorry, for type of training such that people that had vocabulary training scored higher than people had no training. We've named the independent variable and we've talked about both levels of the independent variable and we talked about the difference. And that's what you need to have. You need to have that checklist um, for each description of a main effect. The same thing for the second one. There's a main effect for the type of test. Uh, 
No mention about training because, again, we're only interested in the type of test here. Um, so we have our checklist that it's the type of test. We have um, our checklist that both le uh, levels are mentioned, both math and verbal test scores were mentioned. And um, we talked about that difference, okay, that verbal scored higher than math scores, okay? So again, when we're describing these things, we would only um, talk about each level of the main effect. Now, when you look at this graph, well, you can see straight off the bat, there's an interaction, right? Um, so we've got um, these lines are not parallel. Um, so that's going to indicate that there's an uh, interaction. They're converging. Um, so remember, if it's converging, diverging, or crossing, um, we know that we have an interaction. So here they're converging. Um, and so we can see something different is going on. And so when we talk about the interaction, that's when we're going to say, talk about both levels of um, the, um, we're going to talk about both independent variables, okay? So here you can see we have verbal and math across the bottom. Um, so the test, the red line is going to be um, our, uh, excuse me, our uh, verbal, um, our, our vocabulary training scores, um, and our um, blue line, I'm sorry, the blue line is our vocabulary training scores, and um, the red line is our no training. So, um, what we're going to do then is say, okay, well, um, there was no difference in math scores whether someone got the vocabulary training or not. Okay, so we've talked about both data points there. However, there's our caveat statement. There was a difference for vocabulary training on the verbal test, whereas verbal scores were higher with vocabulary training than math scores, okay? Which is right what you would expect. Verbal training would help verbal scores, but it's gonna have no effect on math scores. That's what you'd expect. But notice what I did there. I talked about all four conditions. I talked about no training math and verbal. I talked about vocabulary training math and verbal. And I described how something different was going on in one condition versus the other. So look at that math score, okay? There's both threes, right? There's no difference between vocabulary training versus no training. However, in the verbal test score, there was a difference. Um, so again, that's what we're gonna need to indicate. Unfortunately, with a factorial result, there's not this fill in the blank kind of thing because each one is different. So let's talk about some more. Okay, so we have um, both of these um, are going to have an interaction. Our independent variable one here is um, aggression related words versus neutral words. And our independent variable two here um, is phototype. Now, clearly, we've got an interaction because they are crisscross applesauce. Um, and um, so it's very clear that there's an interaction here. Um, so then what we want to do is we want to talk about that. Okay, so we need to have describe all four data points. We need to talk about um, alcohol, photo, aggressive related words, that top pink spot. We're going to talk about alcohol, photo, neutral worlds. That's that bottom orange spot. And we're going to talk about how something completely opposite is happening for the plant photo. Um, that the plant photo, we actually saw um, higher reaction times for neutral words than for the aggressive related words. Okay. So um, you would say, and again, we don't have a lot of information here, but we would say something um, when presented an alcohol uh, photo, uh, alcohol photo, or a photo that had pictures of alcohol in it, um, we saw higher reaction times for aggressive related words than neutral words. However, but something depends on, put that caveat in there, when presented a neutral plant photo, um, we saw higher reaction times for neutral words than aggression related words. So we've talked about all four data points and we talked about how something different was going on between those two. That there's this depends, right? Um, it depends on which level of the independent variable we're looking at um, as to what is going on. Um, again, we're going to say any, um, and our dependent variable was reaction time. Again, that's labeled right there for you. Um, here's another example. Um, again, we're going to say anything that's not 100% parallel is going to have an interaction. I would not give you an example like this on an exam because it's, it's a little ambiguous, but if you look at them, they're not parallel. Um, so we're going to say that there's an interaction here. Now, granted, it's going to be, it, it's probably not going to be statistically significant, but that's another part of the class. So let's still describe this. So independent variable one is the cell phone condition, whether people were on their cell phone or when they were not on their cell phone. 
uh, independent variable two is young drivers versus older drivers. And our dependent variable is braking onset time, okay? So how long it took them to start braking. Um, and so what we would say um, is for individuals on the cell phone, um, older drivers had a higher reaction time um, than younger drivers for braking. However, um, that difference was reduced for the not on cell phone condition where the difference between breaking on set time for younger drivers versus older drivers wasn't as great. Okay, so here we would say that there's a difference, right? One, we had a bigger difference than a, a smaller difference. You could even include numbers here because this one is so minute. Um, but you're still saying that something different is going on versus the cell phone condition versus the not on phone condition. You could do this the exact opposite way too. You could talk about it, say, okay, for younger drivers, this is what's going on. But for older drivers, something else is going on. You can do it either way. It doesn't matter which independent variable you use. Um, to describe it, um, whatever it makes it easiest for you to convey that information to your reader. Remember, the whole point of this is that you're describing the interaction to your reader who can't see the graph, right? Who doesn't know what's going on. Um, and so, again, whatever makes that clearest, it doesn't matter which direction you go. These are the exact same data points, the exact same interactions we just talked about. I, again, just wanted to point out how we can do this exact same thing from a bar graph. Um, it's just looking at them, it's not as easy to see that the interaction until you draw lines. So you put a dot at the top of each of the pink uh, and you connect the dots. Same thing for the orange, connect the dots. And now you can really, really clearly see that interaction. And um, we'll do the same thing here. Um, dots at both of the orange, dots at both of the pink. Again, it's not as easy to see that one because they are slightly, they're only slightly converging, but if you extended those lines out, they'd connect eventually, right? Um, so again, we would say that there is an interaction here. Okay, so back to our vocabulary training. I did talk about this one a little bit already. Every single interaction is different. There's no single sentence structure. Um, so you can try this simple main effect strategy where you describe the main effect for one independent variable, but put that caveat in the middle. So there's an interaction such that for verbal tests, vocabulary training did better than no training. But for math tests, the training group scored the same, okay? So we've described the main effect for vocabulary training, and we describe the main effect for no vocabulary training, and we put that caveat in the middle, right? However, but um, that something's depending on the other, and um, that's what we're trying to do. Again, every different interaction, every interaction is different, and so there's no single sentence structure. Um, so this first one, when people recall at the water's edge, they do better if they learned words at the water's edge. But, or here we just have a semicolon, something to say that something else is different, something that's breaking this idea apart. When people were called words underwater, they did better if they learned underwater, okay? So again, they're showing, showing you this. And um, for the next one, um, drinking makes everybody more aggressive. And you can see that in the lines, right? All the lines went up when they were drunk versus the placebo. However, but, some sort of caveat, this is especially true for heavy men. Um, so you can see that that green line goes up much more dra dramatically um, than that orange line does. It, it made everybody more aggressive, but was even more the case for the heavy men. Um, so again, because every interaction is different, there's not one single sentence structure that you can use to describe these. Okay, so the best way to do main effects and interactions is practice. Um, so, you know, watch this video as many times as you need to. Practice writing, even if you're not required to, practice writing out main effects and interactions um, because you're going to be using it throughout the course. Not only in this research methods part, we're going to still need it um, when we get to um, the statistics portion of the course as well. Okay, thanks so much.